Life can change in an instant. For many wheelchair users, the struggle to push forward is a daily challenge. After years of development and countless prototypes, we created Rib Grips, the revolutionary wheelchair hand rim covers with built-in ribs for ultimate grip and comfort. No more slick surfaces, no more heat burns, just pure, reliable grip. Rib Grips, empowering you to push forward with ease. Rib Grips, get a grip on your freedom. Discover the difference. Visit ribgrips.com and use promo code GRIP today. In a world where dreams meet reality, there exists a place where your business can flourish. That place is Shopify. Imagine having the power to craft your online store with tools that make it as easy as a gentle breeze. Whether you're an artisan of handmade wonders, a creator of digital treasures, or a curator of the latest trends, Shopify stands by your side. With its customizable templates, seamless integrations, and support that's always there, your dream store is just a heartbeat away. Join millions of visionaries around the globe and let Shopify guide you on your journey. Visit roguemedianetwork.com slash Shopify. That's roguemedianetwork.com slash S-H-O-P-I-F-Y. And embark on your free trial. Shopify, where your commerce dreams come to life. Rachel Ruth Tate, and this is Text Astrology. Good morning, day, evening, or whenever I am finding you. I am Rachel Ruth, Hellenistic astrologer, humbly at your digital service, and welcome to this edition of the Text Astrology Podcast. In today's episode, we are talking about the new moon in Capricorn occurring on Friday, December 23rd at 4.18 a.m. Central Standard Time at just one degree of Capricorn. Now, this lunation is one of opportunity for those who choose to seize it, I believe. Let me break down the logic for you as we move ahead like any good Capricorn would. This new moon in Capricorn is characterized by a cardinal or initiatory quality. Capricorn is our cardinal earth sign, remember? So we are going to get somewhere and emotionally move ahead. The directional moon, which is edifying, particularly because the moon's ruler, our greater malefic Saturn, is in excellent condition moving direct in the last decan of its other home sign, the next sign in the zodiac, fixed air Aquarius. This combination gives sturdiness and dignity to our emotional bodies and lends a potentially long-term positive implication to the Saturnine circumstances around this new moon. The moon herself is also one of the triplicity rulers of Capricorn, lending it and us some additional ability to operate. What is more, Venus, our personal benefic or individual good, is another triplicity ruler of Capricorn, and she happens to be in the house, sitting 15 degrees away, bonifying and generally benefiting the whole new moon situation that's happening right there at one degree. So we will have the heart for the happenings at this moment. And though Venus is close by, she isn't actually the most influential planet aspecting this moon. The new moon is most closely aspected by Jupiter, our greater benefic, from its location at zero degrees of Aries adding to the growing list of this lunation's potentially auspicious qualities. Because our greater benefic Jupiter has also just changed signs mere days before this new moon, underscoring its influence on this new moon as Jupiter has moved to Aries, the cardinal fire sign ruled by Mars, where Jupiter also retains its own unique socially positive power 
in the form of triplicity rulership. But, but, there's always a but. It must be noted that the news with the new moon isn't all aptitude and optimism because the moon is in its detriment in Capricorn, being directly across the zodiac or at its furthest point from its home sign of nurturing cardinal water cancer. Detriment is debility. It's a hard time. Really, planets in detriment just have to work harder or at a higher cost or more. In my experience, sometimes their efforts backfire or don't lead to the intended ends or require more energy than it seems that they should. In this case, the moon's deep Cancerian imperative for nourishment and rejuvenate, rejuvenation, restoration, that's hard to achieve within the cold, strategic, and accomplishment-oriented Saturnian sign of Capricorn. Human emotions are difficult and nigh impossible to apply a strict logic to. Individual care doesn't have a manual or standard operating procedure, both of which Capricorn loves. We, we can't force feelings. And what's more on, on the hard stuff side, at this moment, Capricorn's exaltation ruler, where this moon happens, right? Capricorn's exaltation ruler, and the ruler of Aries, where closely linked Jupiter is, that ruler Mars, ruler of both, is deep, deep into its retrograde and at a virtual standstill at the time that this moon happens, creating an almost unnatural sense of stillness and inactivity about the whole thing. And speaking of retrogrades, Mercury is also co-present in Capricorn with the moon and Venus, and it, it will begin its retrograde back through the sign less than a week after the moon happens. We are going to have a lot to think about Mercury stuff and some extended time to think about it, that retrograde. So, Rachel, what, what does this all mean, you ask? So let's summarize this. The new moon is happening in a hard place, felt and sensed hard shit on the menu, but it retains some power, meaning that this might suck, but what we see in the mirror is definitely not all bad because the benefics are there. Our access to joy and hope in good times is not at any time lost. But we aren't able to get out of some personal tough spot yet because our minds have to go over this stuff again and really apprehend what it is before we can put whatever it is to rest. And there isn't yet clarity about what we do with the revelations we've had and are having around this new moon's time. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is a okay the sea goat Capricorn knows we are both the pilot and the craft. We have to be prepared to encounter myriad terrain in life, some of it extreme. But we were made for the task. Doing hard things is in some way its own reward because there will be hard things inevitably to do in a human life. Birth, loss, grief, separation, sacrifice, war, I, I could go on. But there are hard things to do that are worth doing and worth doing right. Capricorn doesn't do anything half-assed. Saturn doesn't understand the idea of halfway or unfinished. There is a grit and determination about Cardinal Earth that we could all benefit by understanding the enlightened version of. Capricorn says holding space for ourselves creating the container of society that doesn't come quickly, easily, or without cost. But duty and honor and deeply held values are worthwhile and claiming responsibility for working towards our version of what is meritorious is fulfilling. Aristotle's eudaimonia. This, this new moon in Capricorn is a call to action. 
It is a dark mirror that reflects back to us those shadows which we must see in order to cast off, revealing more light and greater future potential. No more self-sabotage or self-destructive habits or lack of accountability or shirking of personal responsibility for emotions. No more sleeping on your growth, development, and up-leveling. That is the Jupiterian element that we will all have access to this new moon. There is great, great hope in recognizing what must change and beginning to change it. Hope that tomorrow can be better than today. The satisfaction that comes from spiritual shift, you know what I mean, from making even just one small adjustment that improves daily life. That feeling of, I can. Really, this new moon in Capricorn is about reclaiming power and increasing personal agency. Whatever it takes to continue improving yourself is worth it and will improve society. That cliche, be the change you wish to see in the world, definitely applies here. As the Roman historian Livy said, in great straits, when hope is small, the boldest counsels are the safest. So let Jupiter in Aries and Venus in Capricorn be your counsel during this new moon in Capricorn, moving you through the darkness of any difficult emotions into a new space of self-realization and constructive hope that things can and will get better. And your belief in yourself is the key to unlock it all. So keep the faith, kindle the spark, enjoy the journey, and be patient with yourself and others. On that note, let's see what this new moon in Capricorn syzygy may have in store for you individually. We are doing these horoscopes as mantras as well, all beginning with, I am working on. Capricorn is a worker. And I request that you please use your rising sign for these horoscopes as that speaks to the first house of the self. But your sun sign will work for a day chart or your moon for a night chart. So this cycle for all 12 signs. Aries. I am working on my career and public roles. Taurus, I am working on my higher education and faith. Gemini, I am working on my intimate relationship and shared finances. Cancer, I am working on my partnerships and ways of relating to others. Leo, I am working on my daily routines and personal well-being. Virgo. I am working on my creative life and pursuit of pleasure. Libra. I am working on my home and family and the roots of my being. Scorpio. I am working on my communication and ways of interacting with my environment. Sagittarius. I am working on honing my talents and craft and stewarding my personal possessions. Capricorn. I am working on myself, my body, and my personal care. Aquarius, I am working on my mental and emotional health and transcending personal issues. Pisces, I am working on my relationships within groups and organizations. Take a moment to let your horoscope echo in your mind while we take a short break for a potential word from our sponsors.
Life can change in an instant. For many wheelchair users, the struggle to push forward is a daily challenge. After years of development and countless prototypes, we created Rib Grips, the revolutionary wheelchair hand rim covers with built-in ribs for ultimate grip and comfort. No more slick surfaces, no more heat burns, just pure, reliable grip. Rib Grips, empowering you to push forward with ease. Rib Grips, get a grip on your freedom. Discover the difference. Visit ribgrips.com and use promo code GRIP today. And here we are back at Rogue Media Network and this installment of the show. The latter half of our episode is devoted to my top three major transits or alignments to pay attention to over the next two weeks. First transit. Mercury stations retrograde on Thursday, December 29th at 3.31 a.m. Central Standard Time at 24 degrees of Capricorn, conjoin the planet Venus to the degree. Mercury will retrograde or move apparently backward in the sky to 8 degrees of Capricorn, where it stations direct on the morning of January 18th, 2023. Oh, we have been working up to this retrograde station for a couple of weeks now, moving through Mercury's shadow, beginning to take note of the themes that will require revisiting between now and the end of next month. Scan your memory for thoughts and intuitions that you've had recently and string them together and keep in mind that that series of topics will be addressed twice over with one backwards and one more forward pass by Mercury. Speaking of, Mercury is our mind stuff. Remember our thoughts, speech, exchange, commerce, expression, and also children, but are those not our living expressions anyway? Mercury's symbolism in our lives speaks to the realm of cognition and mental awareness on a personal level, as all thought is, mind you. And Mercury is the fastest moving planet with the most frequent retrogrades outside of the quick motion of our luminary, the moon, which is why it's no surprise that our sentiments and thoughts, that's moon and Mercury stuff, evolve and change so, so quickly as they do. Both of Mercury's home signs are mutable, Gemini and Virg Virgo, excuse me, and that mutability, that flexibility speaks to an inherent changeability of the human mind. The very word mercurial literally means subject to sudden or unpredictable changes. But Mercury is doing this retrograde in Capricorn, Saturn sign, which is much more about that cardinal initiation, that direct route from A to B, that sober stoic attitude of necessity and tradition, as we've spoken to previously, meaning that we will be required to swiftly implement the change we wish to realize. This is Capricorn. We're being practical. At the moment that Mercury begins to retrograde, it is also conjoined by Venus, our personal benefic planet, which brings love, joy, and sensual pleasure in Capricorn, a sign in which she retains some amount of power, some triplicity rulership. And that in and of itself says to me that we will be required to love ourselves and others enough to bear the social burden of beginning to literally make the alterations and adjustments to our historical patterns of thought and action that we now perceive to be disordered and wish to release. Capricorn is where Mars exalts. So let's do it now. Right now. Venus can join Mercury as it begins to retrograde in Capricorn further reminds us that it is our duty to ourselves and others that we start this work. That we engage in a plan to do emotionally better. The conservatism of Capricorn does not mean retaining traitors or maintaining fantasies, not at all. That would be irrational and inevitably would end tragically. 
We also see the benefic nature, though, of, of what this retrograde is trying to equip us with through the closest aspect that Mercury makes with a traditional planet or a luminary outside of that Venusian conjunction it's in. And that's a sextile. A sextile is an angle of the nature of Venus. It's an easy opportunity for union or blending of energies. So Mercury also makes a sextile from 24 degrees of Capricorn to the moon at 29 degrees of Pisces at the time of the station. And Pisces is Jupiter's mutable water sign symbolized by the dual fish that swim in harmony and perfect sync. It is in these waters that Venus finds her most potent expression. And since she is conjunct Mercury at the time of the retrograde station, she's also making that sextile aspect. Not to mention Jupiter has just recently stationed direct. A lot of benefic support here. The moon is offering us an education on inner felt sense, that kind of inner look at how we can heal and what we can let go of. My feeling on this Mercury retrograde is the score will be a fair one at the end. Capricorn and its ruler Saturn reward those who put in time and do the work by putting forth their best effort in the situations that honestly require it. And this, this is one of them. For the next month, let's practice patience with the bumps and delays of Mercury retrograde. Let's learn from our mistakes, make necessary adjustments, self-edit when appropriate, and also take charge when the circumstances call for it. Lead in your life and in your own progression. Support others where it is your healthy and right role to do so as well. Simply do what is to be done right in front of you. You'll see it and your efforts will be seen as well and recognized by others around you and by the universe as you also begin to recognize the value of that sort of work inside of yourself. Second transit. Venus conjoins Pluto on Saturday, December 31st at 11.24 p.m. Central Standard Time, mere minutes before New Year's Eve becomes New Year's Day in the central United States, right there at 27 degrees of Capricorn. So Venus and Pluto have conjoined several times in this part of the Capricorn constellation very recently. On December 28th of 2021, December 11th of 2021, and March 3rd of 2022. This has happened three times recently. So if you have historically kept a calendar or a journal, go back and check for themes and common threads around those dates. They, they may surprise you. You may end up digging into some almost soul-shaking, heart-centered revelations around power dynamics in your relationships and the shadow side of the pursuit of pleasure. Are you getting a sense of a very Saturnian streak in this edition of the podcast? Yes, it is true. A plethora of important activity is going down in the cold, earthy sign of Capricorn. The moon's happening there. Mercury retrograde's happening there. Venus-Pluto conjunction now happening there. And the cardinal activation is real. Jupiter just went into Aries too. So those of you with major Capricorn, Aries, Libra, and Cancer placements, listen up. Look at your chart. Any luminaries or personal planets or ascendant contact, especially by close degree, to these happenings in Capricorn is going to set off a reaction. Cardinal signs are about moving in a direction, about setting off and going towards. And for all of us, no matter the placements, this Venus-Pluto conjunction and all of the aforementioned stuff about Venus, the new moon, Mercury, all, all the goings on in Capricorn are going to light up this sector of life and our natal charts. And what we begin in regard to that area holds great import and promise, but not without cost. 
not without a dark night of the soul. We don't get our wisdom without losing that innocence. We don't get to the end without hitting rock bottom first. Not without a Persephone journey and some sacrifice. There's no hero without a requisite previous journey. Venus set off the Mercury retrograde just a few degrees earlier, right? At 24 Capricorn. And then now she's joining up with the ruler of all that is unseen, all that's mysterious. She's joining up with Pluto just three degrees later at 27 degrees of Capricorn. And a conjunction is traditionally within three degrees. And I have a hunch that these events in our lived experiences, that Mercury retrograde, the Venus, Pluto, this moon, they're going to be linked like one long happening, one conjunction. Our hearts, Venus, will be into doing the real work of the Mercury retrograde of fixing our historical mental and emotional blocks to create more success. And we will start off with great Jupiterian energy and high hopes, that Pisces moon, right? And then, and then it dawns inside of our hearts that the task at hand will be monumental. And it will take us into the depths of ourselves and society and a world that we had barely imagined emotional caves where things we didn't bury properly in our past scream silently to be excavated and reinterred with more honor so they can stop haunting our psyches and communities. Pluto, Pluto will take Venus down deep and he will show her some shocking stuff. But there is a deep respect as well that true love has for the truth. No matter how dark, and Pluto may plumb the depths. Modern astrology actually gives Pluto rulership over the sign of Scorpio, our, our fixed water depths. So Pluto may take us to the very bottom. But it is what emerges from that darkness. It is that power in revelation. It is the true underlying mechanism that moves mortal threads along. And a solid Venus can work with that energy. She can take it and take responsibility for it. Venus and Capricorn can take whatever is honestly hers to take, and she can deliver, and will do. Remember, Venus will emerge into Aquarius soon, and Pluto not too long after, in March of 2023. So we will never, I repeat, never, experience Pluto and Venus's connection in Capricorn again in our lifetimes, never. Its orbital period takes 248 years, 248 years to go around the zodiac. This deeply moving call to our heart-centered attention that Venus and Pluto are making will never be made again. So let your heart be edified by that knowledge and learn whatever and wherever you can. Venus and Pluto together can absolutely strategize and should this Capricorn topic is one of great import this year and sort of all of our missions should we choose to accept them. Third transit. Venus enters Aquarius on Monday, January 2nd at 8.06 p.m. Central Standard Time where she will be until she exits the sign and moves into Pisces, Jupiter's yin home sign and the sign of Venus's own exaltation later this month on January 26th. While this season may seem all Saturn with the whole lot happening in Capricorn and then this transit in Aquarius, Saturn's home signs, but it's not so. We have almost equal parts Saturn and Mercury and Venus featured in this episode, I believe. And fixed air Aquarius is about belief system. So we can't forget that these three planets do come together as exaltation ruler, triplicity ruler, and ruler respectively in the cardinal air sign of Libra, which means the aims of social integrity, fairness, and justice, and the truth and beauty and expression, those are inextricably intertwined. While Aquarius, where Venus is, is not Libra, that explanation of the aforementioned planet's shared values represented in the sign of Libra uh, is just serving to illustrate that our greater malefic Saturn 
has more in common with the personal benefic Venus and the hermaphroditic neutral Mercury than it may appear at first blush. The perceived chasm between our social obligation, Saturn, and our personal satisfaction, Venus, Mercury, is not perhaps such a wide gap after all. Because there is inherent good in service and service orientation, which is a central theme for Aquarius. There are five lo love languages, and we've all heard of the love languages. Literally, one of them is acts of service. So doing right by people and helping them out when they need it is a huge chunk of loving them. Just like accepting that same sort of assistance and support from our own communities is a huge part of being loved by others. Furthermore, Venus in Aquarius is joining ruler Saturn in the hallowed halls of that fixed air sign. So her spine is being straightened by the energy of knowing that the king is in fact at home in the castle. Like, okay, if the late Queen Elizabeth II were in Buckingham Palace when you were there, most of us would be way more present and pay way more attention than if she weren't. It's always more efficacious for any planet to spend time in a sign whose ruler is currently in good condition. Saturn at home in Aquarius makes Venus's time more impactful, better. What? What might that look like, though, as lived experience with Venus and Saturn in Aquarius? Well, it's going to look a whole lot like accountability as a love language, speaking of. Like well-formed thoughts and kind words spoken with intention. Remember, air signs are all about social, all about the communication, expression, and learning that we do. Mercury, Mercury is also one of its triplicity rulers after all. Venus in Aquarius does words of affirmation well to bring up another of the love languages. I'm really into these right now. Venus in Aquarius as love language, that works. But she also doesn't speak idly, especially with Big Daddy Saturn listening in. No, Venus in Aquarius gives compliments that hold great meaning and demonstrate a distinct synthesis of attention in appreciation. Think about it like this. Somebody complimenting you on something not basic or shallow, but on something you've been working on and speaking directly to the evidence of that work with admiration. Those are the best compliments that really, really feels like, like feeling seen for a lot of us. And Venus in Aquarius can also observe her beloveds with sustained focus and attention. She can be relatively detached and unemotional, so watch for that, but she's definitely on time and prepared for whatever the connection holds. Venus in Aquarius also tends to root for the underdog as she has a unique ability to witness what is and thus appreciate the marginalized and cast aside. With Saturn around as well, it's almost as if meritorious sentiments, Saturn and Venus, are bound to win the day. Them with the best intentions and spending the most earnest time those making the most concerted efforts will be rewarded because Saturn is an impartial judge, the exaltation ruler of Libra, the scales, literally. And Venus in Aquarius is here to offer cash and prizes to us every time we do the right thing or get the right answer or try our honest to goodness damnedest. As I said in the last transit segment, Venus is coming off of a conjunction with Pluto who is big and bad, and into Aquarius, where strict and stoic Saturn is waiting for her. So, <laughs> pardon yourself and anybody else if you're not really having that much fun. Or if duty and due diligence and patience and practice are taking the place of revelry and relaxation. It's that kind of time. Jupiter and Aries and Venus and Aquarius are two planets of good stuff, Jupiter and Venus, in those two signs, they do not want to relax. Aries and Aquarius are both active, both young. And they do, however, sextile each other. So the first sign, Aries, and the 11th sign, they make a sextile. And with both our benefics there, they're connected, right? And, and the benefics are then sharing energy. So with those two arranged as they are, my advice is to enjoy the work. Have fun giving it your all. 
Focus on what you love and the rest will follow. And values and loves can and do change, but, but give it your best shot, whatever it is and wherever you're at. And know when Venus enters Pisces and then Mars goes direct, we can get back to some champagne parties and sexy art making or something like that. But for now, it's still a Saturnine time. We may be more obliged to those we love, but would we actually have it any other way? So what do these Saturn heavy next couple of weeks have in store? Well, let's move expeditiously and without ceremony as Venus and Aquarius would into our outline of the upcoming quality of time. The weeks after this new moon in Capricorn syzygy will be challenging, duty bound, slow, committed, and character building. Saturnine, yes, I know, I know. So let's transition right into our do's and don'ts for this new moon in Capricorn time period. Do practice a pause between reaction and response. Big feelings often need to be felt and handled before we can take effective action. You have time to feel. Don't shut down or lash out because something is hard to share or talk about or you've gotten triggered. We have to practice being truly vulnerable. Do notice or witness yourself without judgment as you approach implementing change of patterns and habits. We rarely succeed 100% perfectly the first time so give yourself grace and stay committed. Don't self-flagellate or berate yourself for aiming high and missing your own mark with personal development or emotional healing. That bullying is not going to get you to the wholeness you crave. Do allow yourself space to be frustrated or angry. Learning more about what you feel and how to best channel and release the difficult sensations, that's just a part of life. Movement and journaling is often helpful, and personal coping skills are honed over time. Don't confuse anger with selfish entitlement. Sometimes we resist feelings or throw tantrums because we don't believe we deserve the situation. We make ourselves the victim. Life isn't fair but we can all handle our shit. And that wraps up this new moon in Capricorn edition of the show. Slow down and stay centered during the next couple of slightly arduous weeks, knowing it's all for the best. As always, please subscribe to rate, save, and share this podcast. It helps me more than I can say. Have a productive syzygy and stay well, everybody out there. That's it for this episode, folks. Meet me here every full and new moon for more cosmic wisdom. For now, you can find me on Instagram at Rachel Ruth Tate and at Tex Astrology or between the pages of my book, Meditations on Being, available on Amazon and wherever else you purchase books. This has been a Rogue Media Podcast. Life can change in an instant. For many wheelchair users, the struggle to push forward is a daily challenge. After years of development and countless prototypes, we created Rib Grips, the revolutionary wheelchair hand rim covers with built-in ribs for ultimate grip and comfort. No more slick surfaces, no more heat burns, just pure, reliable grip. Rib Grips, empowering you to push forward with ease. Rib Grips, get a grip on your freedom. Discover the difference. Visit ribgrips.com and use promo code GRIP today. 
In a world where dreams meet reality, there exists a place where your business can flourish. That place is Shopify. Imagine having the power to craft your online store with tools that make it as easy as a gentle breeze. Whether you're an artisan of handmade wonders, a creator of digital treasures, or a curator of the latest trends, Shopify stands by your side. With its customizable templates, seamless integrations, and support that's always there, your dream store is just a heartbeat away. Join millions of visionaries around the globe and let Shopify guide you on your journey. Visit roguemedianetwork.com slash Shopify. That's roguemedianetwork.com slash S-H-O-P-I-F-Y. And embark on your free trial. Shopify, where your commerce dreams come to life.